Cindy Walter. And I'm Janie Donaldson. Welcome to Quilt Central, where we celebrate quilting and everyday living. Today, we're going to touch on the heart of creative quilting, from an heirloom wall hanging to comfort quilts for those who are so close to our hearts. Many of us have been affected by breast cancer in one way or another, and today we're going to interview a woman who is focused on pink ribbons that comfort and heal. We hope you will be inspired by the many quilters who have shared their voices and expressions in the pink ribbon quilt. Stay with us. Quilt Central is made possible in part by Janome America. Janome, because you simply love to sew. American Quilter Society, dedicated to promoting today's quilter. Sulky of America, makers of decorative threads, stabilizers, and books. Olfa, the original rotary cutting system. A1 Quilting Machines, precision quilting machines. A1. American Professional Quilting Systems, APQS, offers a full line of hand-guided quilting machines. June Taylor Company. Krause Publications. Milliken & Company. The Warm Company. Additional funding was provided by these companies that care about quilting. Welcome to Quilt Central, celebrating quilting in everyday living, with your hosts, Janie Donaldson and Cindy Walter. Well, many of us are used to using our computer, but imagine using it to create your quilt. Join me in welcoming our educator, Cynthia Scott, who's going to show us how the computer can enhance our designs. Hi, Cynthia. Hi, Cindy. How are you? Wonderful. What do you have for us today? Well, we've got a neat heirloom wall quilt that we're creating um, using our Easy Edit software. I saw it. It's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, I think it's a nice project. And how do we get started on it? Well, we started with our Easy Edit software, and um, we are creating our center oval and four Trapunto designs, perfect placement and very easy with our software. Well, let, let me ask you, do you have to be yes. a rocket scientist to use this software? It is so easy. Okay. It is just a few clicks and you're off and running okay. with a wonderful okay. design. Okay, I trust you. Good. Yeah. Show me then. Okay, so we have our Easy Edit software up and all I'm going to do is import our oval into our design area. Oh, wow, that was fast. It was. Now that we've brought it in, um, we can very easily bring it to the center position of our design area, mm -hmm. and then we can bring in um, just one corner Trapunto design, which is from one of our design cards, bring it in, place it in a pleasing position in one corner, and merely by selecting the auto layout feature of corner, we can send Amazing. It Trapunto. rotated it and flipped it for you so you have four corners exactly. perfectly. Exactly. Oh, that's great. Exactly. Now, how do we transfer that onto our cloth or our project? Well, what we can do is um, save it onto our ATA PC card. Okay. Or if we wanted to, we could directly hook the our computer up to the sewing machine and send the design to the machine that way. Okay. So whatever function we have, we could use. Okay. Exactly. Um, so we bring our design in. And um, But first, after we've got, gotten it on the machine, we need to mark it on our fabric. Okay. So we've also printed out a template of the design that we just created on From the software. From the computer. Right, okay. right. So we printed um, two 8.5 by 11 sheets, okay. taped them together. We basically have our layout. That's wonderful. It's a pattern, a template. Okay. Right. So we merely place it on our fabric, centering it, okay. and using a water-soluble pen, we mark our uh, center oval and the four corner Trapunto designs okay. directly on the fabric. Well, that's easy. Okay. Now we're ready for the magic. Okay. Using water soluble thread in the top only, we can then I'll take that. Okay. Um, embroider with our embroidery hoop um, our corner designs. And what is so great about this and easy is using our cloth setter. This makes it very quick and easy to get perfect placement. Did you use this extra thick batting first? Or? Actually, we're gonna do that um, after we've, we've hooped our fabric. Okay. Um, we just merely center our um, crosshairs 
We're hooped. That is such a wonderful way to center your embroidery because that's something I always have problems with. I know, and you saw how fast this oh, was. Very so easy to do. Okay. So next we are ready to oh, do I see our... you leave it on the hoop. Great. Right. Okay. We place it on the machine in the embroidery mode, put our polyester thick bat underneath, okay. stitch with water-soluble thread in all four corners, and that creates our four trapunto designs. Great idea. We then trim away the excess poly bat away from the design area, and then we are ready to layer um, our piece with our with our um, flat bat okay. cotton batting. Um, at that point, what we do is go ahead and stitch our center oval. Oh. Okay. Again, using our cloth setter okay. um, and our crosshairs, we can um, get stitch. it right in the center. Because I noticed on this one, you have the center mark too. Right. So we just put that right. Perfect. Exactly. Great. Um, an extra thing that we did here after embroidering the oval was to grid stitch our background. Um, oh. And um, very easy to do using our uh, knee lift and some invisible thread. Now, did you use the quilter's guide or did you just use the side of the pressure foot? You know, I just used the side okay. of the um, open toe applique foot. And a very smart thing, I noticed that you mark this with a 60 degree angle because it's easy to have that grid. Not, right, right, right. right. Super, that's really so, good. Then we can even, um, then we can go ahead and rehoop. Um, we can print our template out even on clear acrylic oh, okay. um, uh, acetate. We've got, again, perfect placement for our embroidery design that we're going to do in the center. Great. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Boy, this is going to just be super and beautiful. So the next step, once you do finish the center, mm -hmm. is starting some of your decorative threads. Right. At this point, after we've done our embroidery, we then want to layer with our, our nice backing fabric. And we can go ahead and do our twin needle stitching. And something that some of your viewers may not know about. Let me ask you first. Yes. When you layer this, um, do you have to use another stabilizer or just spray basting? I like to use on a small project the spray um, uh, adhesive. Okay. The okay. temporary spray adhesive okay. works great. Um, so when we're to this point, we can use a wing needle and some of those heirloom stitches to complete our project. Oh, I can't wait. I know it's going to yes. be beautiful. So what we're doing, um, we have our stitch selected. And I'm just going to narrow the, the width down a little bit. And we're going to get started here. And what foot do you have? Just a regular? I like that open toe applique yeah, once foot. once again so you can see what you're doing. OK, right. good. So we're just going to start. And this wing needle, which has blades on the side, wow. um, actually perforates through the quilt. That is amazing. And gives a beautiful open stitch. And that's a, that is an old fashioned stitch that they used to do by hand and they would cut out those areas. That is gorgeous. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. Very nice. Boy, I almost feel like you're cheating. It's so good. We are. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's gorgeous. It's very easy. Okay. Um, once we've reached um, the point where we have um, completed the, yeah, we need this piece, um, where we've completed the center area, and we've actually also done some um, uh, stippling in this area. Okay. We can then move on to decorative stitches. Oh boy, on the border. Yeah. Right. So what we have, um, we can frame um, our design area with a French knot stitch, mm -hmm. um, a satin uh, decorative it's ball perfect. stitch. Yes. I noticed on your other project, for the heirloom project, you used white or beige thread, but yes. it's just as pretty to use the color thread. And it matched your backing fabric, yes. and it pulled it all together. Yes. One last thing, normally on our quilts, we uh, bind, the, pull the bat, uh, binding to the back, and mm -hmm. I noticed you brought your binding to the front. I did, and that was because you could use the decorative thread, a decorative stitch to put the binding down. I used another heirloom uh, hem stitch and actually attached the um, binding to the front of the quilt with the decorative stitch. See, that's another great tip to make our quilt so beautiful. So, a beautiful heirloom whole cloth quilt. Yes with a sampler of threads. Yes. I am so happy you could join us again. You're such a talented seamstress, and I can't wait to try this. Oh, good. Thank you, Cindy. Today we have with us Sally Terry, a celebrity long arm teacher and trainer. She has authored another book, and we are very honored to have her. Welcome, Sally. Thank you. It's a joy to be here. 
you have some new material to show us. Right, I came up with the concept teaching beginning students because it's very difficult for them to come up with a quilting idea actually the thread patterns and what paths that they put on on the quilt and then the second thing they need to do is actually visualize it yes. so it's very difficult for them to see the finished work so I call this the gap this is the area between a simple quilt top like we have here mm -hmm. and the finished quilt well how do we do that well th we have five shapes that we're going to talk about and we're going to use an arc an s curve a straight line a loop and a hook and with those five simple shapes i call those the language of quilting we can come up with a pattern that is actually um, fitting to the fabric and to the quilt itself so you're saying almost all of our quilting patterns are made with just those that's right you can that's divide them all up into those five shapes goes. Now, if you had this quilt, what would you ask yourself or how would you decide where to start with this? The first thing I would do is ask five questions of the piecer. Who is it for? What is it meant to be? When is it due? Which is very important because sometimes as professional long arm quilters, we will sacrifice a pattern or a design just to get it done. Right. But obviously this looks like a baby quilt. A boy baby quilt. A boy's quilt and so we'll we know that it's for a boy and so then we would start looking in here and trying to find patterns and clues from the fabric and we have uh, bugs and fish and little sharks and I think there's some frogs in here so we would take some of these basic shapes and start designing patterns. So like with these fish with the arcs in their back you would work with right. the arcs or the bubbles you would work with loops. loops. That's correct, and design, and I like to simplify it down to three basic shapes, so don't pick any more than three. I think okay. sometimes it becomes too confusing and too pattern intensive. Three would be easy to work with, if you can just look at that, and then how do you decide, once you have the three, for instance, where do you go after that? Then we actually would look at the fabric itself, like the quilts that are behind us, they're very bright yet they have very traditional patterns to them, yet the fabric is non-traditional. So we would decide if it's a traditional quilt or a non-traditional quilt, if the patterns are traditional or not. And the more artistic and non-traditional the quilt and the block, the more pattern and uh, thread work it's more going to need. More flamboyant right. or colorful you'd go. Correct. Okay. So that, we answer those five questions, and then from there we actually let the quilt answer the last eight questions. And can you give us a clue to those? Sure. One of them would be, is there any specialty work on it, like trapunto or any embroidery? Sometimes I will get a block that's even um, cross-stitched. And so that would be very important. So you want to stay with the theme a little bit. Right. And for instance, on this, now these are pre-printed quilts, which is wonderful for a beginning quilter to practice, to practice on. And on here, I would look and try to find all of the solid areas. And easily, this is where our quilting will really show up. Okay. So, we have some stencils mm -hmm. that you thought you might try or look at or use right. for comparison. And so now we're going to try to visualize the finished quilt and come up with some compatible patterns for it. Now, if you look at this, this tulip, then I would take the this arc here, arc shape. and maybe this is like an S-curve or an arc, and we have two arcs here. And so now I'm starting to you pick out the arc an there. Arc Absolutely. This, and that's repeated. Mm -hmm. And you thought if you needed a block, you found another one. Right. That had arc in it. Well, this is kind of an S shape. S-curve. But this piece here is an arc. That's an arc. So these two obviously are compatible. And this one also. And then if we needed a sashing. But this one would not no actually arc. go. And it doesn't really not a good one. go with any of those choices. So okay. now we've just taken the two simple shapes. Now you also have this here. These are background fill-ins, right? Right. And you can get a lot of clues from the fabric itself and from your choices Could of you give stencils. Us like a little sure. hint? Now this has 
arcs and an S curve in here. So, so those would be an S -curve. Yeah, what I would use. I pulled up my bobbin thread. And I'm going to use like a little That's S a little curve. Stitch regulator yes. sound we have. And then I might put a little curl in it. Now we've got ribbons going. So any of these would be compatible shapes. Right, so they work real well because they don't conflict with what you got going there. And I'll just very simply start filling in. I really like the contrasting thread too. It works well when you're starting to um, actually tie a very contrasting fabric into the entire quilt body. I think that's good there. Everybody can get the idea that you're using the mm -hmm. same shapes just repeated. Mm -hmm. And then very you simple. had a little table runner you wanted to show us, I think. Well, this is... A needle up, so you can run that down a little ways. Because this is... This is where you've really gotten some complexity. You've taken quite a few different shapes, combined them, and then you've actually drawn up some patterns. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to see on. which, yes, which is more fitting and auditioning mm -hmm. the patterns. Auditioning, I like that yeah. word, auditioning a pattern. And so once you have it traced on there, you can kind of see through that to, mm -hmm. and see if that's something you, you want or if you want to turn it right side up, right side down. Right, and that works and well. And this this thread or the paper actually is very transparent, so it does work either either side. And as we look at this fabric, you can see it has birds, leaves. This is there's a dog in here and a rooster mm -hmm. with. And if you look at his tail, those are S curves. And if you look at the birds, you have S curves and arcs. So. I simply tried to combine those shapes. You have given us some wonderful ideas. Thank you. And I like the idea to audition this pattern. Thank so you. thank you very much. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Our guest today is the editor in chief of the Crafters Choice Book Club. Join me in welcoming BJ Birdie. Hi, hi BJ. Hi. You bring a very special special project to us. Yeah. Tell us about it. Well, we did this project with our members. We were looking for a project to get them, our members involved in, and we had a book from Mimi Dietrich called Pink Ribbon Quilt. So we asked members to send in blocks to honor breast can, for breast cancer awareness. So, so the name of your project is the Pink Ribbon Quilt Project. Okay. And how many blocks did you get? And we ended up, um, we entirely unexpectedly got 3,500 quilt blocks. Oh my word! How overwhelming! It was, it was pretty intense number and large number of blocks, unexpected right. number of blocks. And so did you make a quilt with them? Well, we, th <laughs> we thought we were going to make one quilt and yeah. get enough to make one quilt, but we ended up having enough blocks to make 14 quilts. Wow. We made 10 in one weekend with a group of women in New Jersey who helped us put it together, and then we sent the rest of the blocks out to be assembled. For those of the viewers that may not know what Pink Ribbon uh, stands for, can you tell us about yes. that? Well, it's a symbol, become a symbol of breast cancer awareness, okay. and we wanted to do something uh, that was related to women and related to quilting. And it's to support the women and encourage and encourage healing and to, for support. Yes, huh? we thought that we would then donate the proceeds of the quilts to oh. breast cancer organizations. That was the whole oh. idea. But the quilts, we got so many more blocks, and the quilts were so amazing that we wanted. To, then we thought we wanted to document the quilts, and we did this book that we offered to our members called Threaded Together. So, um, I understood you told me earlier that you sold four of them. Yes. And so what's yeah. the proceeds so far? Four from, quilts in the from, book? From the quilts and from the book, we've raised about $38,000 $38, for breast cancer. $38,000 right. out of four quilts. That's incredible. Yeah. Are these blocks from the quilt? This is obviously one of the quilts. When the women, different viewers, people made the blocks, do they symbolize? Yes, we asked women if they wanted to, when they sent in the quilt block, they could send, put an, attach an index card on the back of the block and talk about if the block was in honor of somebody or if what the symbols were that they put into the quilt mm -hmm. block. And we got amazing cards from people and the blocks symbolized amazing, you know, there's honored women, honored mothers, blocks that were made out of, you know, mm -hmm. old garments that belonged to a family member or that had symbolic 
messages. How could them. you even open and read the cards? I, I, There's 36,000 yeah. of them. It'd be so touching. And oh, my word. I know, I know. We had to, when we were trying to get all the blocks organized, we had to make a rule not to read the cards because oh, it became right so moving and it was so upsetting to read everything at that so point. Touching. So touching, mm -hmm. right, so touching. So we decided that we couldn't read them at that point. Of mm -hmm. course, we went back later and yeah. read them. And in the book, we show many of what women said about the blocks, and we show many of the individual blocks as well as the finished quilts. Wonderful. You mentioned then that there are 10 left. Um, is there any way we can see these quilts? Or yeah, um, Well, what we'd like to do is have them, I'm looking for places that they can be displayed. You oh. know, so if there's any So interest. if there's any uh, viewers that have museums or galleries yes. or quilt shows or anywhere, you do have several yes. quilts that can be displayed. Yes, they're still. And are you going to auction them off right away or over time? We would like to do it over time, and I would like to find um, some place that they can also be displayed, they, where they will not just go to a private in individual, and they can be displayed, an organization that might buy them mm -hmm. and display them. They if, were at Quilt Market a couple of, at Quilt Festival okay. a couple of years. If someone wants to contact you to be able to display the quilt yeah. or find out about the next auction, how would they do that? Well, they can, they can um, contact us at our website, which yeah. is crafterschoice.com. Okay. And um, you personally, to BJ, to you personally. Yes, into my attention. Okay. Yes. If yeah. I can ask you, what was yeah. the most touching block that you received? Oh, that's so hard to say because yeah. there were so many. I mean, the one that sticks in my mind yeah. the most is, is um, a, a, a woman who was a breast uh, a cancer nurse, a breast oh. cancer nurse, sent in many blocks and each honoring a patient. Oh, of hers. And oh. That was, I know. And she wrote us a letter and how said, wonderful. how many blocks can I send? I want to send a block. Yeah. And that was that's the one that sticks. I in mean, my mind. she's certainly one of the women that uh, yeah. support and help heal. Yeah, you know, it's I know. awesome. I mean, that's, you know, breast cancer yeah. has touched so many of our lives, and yes. in my life, and several of yes. my good friends. And so, I know that this will be um, uh, very touching for our viewers. So, thank you for being you're our welcome. guest. Thank you for having me. If you're looking for a fast and easy method to construct a quilt, I have one for you. This is a Marshall Star. And stars are sometimes a little difficult because of the points, but this kit has made it very easy. Everything in this kit is pre-selected for you, and it's all half and half blocks. They're all triangles. So once you learn to construct the two triangles together, then we're working with blocks and all straight stitching, and it's very, very easy. When I put these together, I just leave them stacked like this beside my sewing machine and I start putting the triangles together and I run them right under the foot and I chain them together and then when I get them all in a long string I'll take it all over to the cutting table and cut them all apart and then press them and I bring them back and I lay them all out again on a cardboard or breadboard so that I can see that I have everything correct so that I don't get one point turned the other way or some block switched around. And that way I'll keep it straight and I bring this to s right beside the sewing machine and I start sewing them in rows. And after I get the rows together it's pretty easy. And here, this example here, I've got them in the rows so you can see. This makes a really nice star. And when you get them all the blocks together, you can make every other one a solid fabric so that you can uh, expand your quilt. Most queen size quilts are 90 by 108 and that's where I always head is that direction and a lot of kits will bring you right up to 90 by 108. And I like poly battings because I can use them and they're indestructible. I can wash them and dry them. And so many quilts have this beautiful loft to them when they are used, have several layers of poly in them. I also like the extra wide backings. They come like 90 and 108. And if a queen size quilt finishes at 90 and 108, then I can use these extra wide pieces and they fit right on the back so nice. And they just match up to the tops and they help me to keep it square because I tear my backs. So if you're looking for a speedy method, you don't want to be bothered with selecting the fabric, I would recommend a kit. Thank you for joining us today. Next time on Quilt Central, we're going to be inspired by the outdoors. We'll create an autumn embroidered garment. And we're going to adorn the deck with bandanas. So see you then. 
quilt around the clock. Visit the Quilt Central website at www.quiltcentraltv.com for more information on this program. Central is made possible in part by Janome America. Janome, because you simply love to sew. American Quilter Society, dedicated to promoting today's quilter. Sulky of America, makers of decorative threads, stabilizers, and books. Ulfa, the original rotary cutting system. A1 Quilting Machines, Precision Quilting Machines. A1. American Professional Quilting Systems, APQS, offers a full line of hand-guided quilting machines. June Taylor Company, Krause Publications, Millican & Company, The Warm Company. Additional funding was provided by these companies that care about quilting. You can celebrate quilting in your everyday living. To purchase videotapes of this or any episode of Quilt Central, you may call toll-free 1-866-PADUCA or 1-866-723-8224.